Hi, this is Eric Fetch. And for this session, what I want to show you are some of the tools that we can use other than paint brushes to apply watercolor paint in an exciting new way to bring some depth and detail into your watercolor paintings. I'm going to start with a piece of 140 pound paper here, just a clear cold press paper, easy to come by. And what I want to start out with are trying out some techniques and methods here. I want to show you how they work and also how to play catch with watercolor as it's drying on the paper because there's some things we can do with it while it's on there that we want to try out. So let's give it a shot. We've got, uh, let's see, oh let's start out with some texture details on things. But first let's put some water down on just a portion of the paper here just in this upper corner. Let's try out some texture details and see what happens with this. Now the easy way to put texture into your paintings is to use a toothbrush and to pick up some paint with it, get the toothbrush wet. Let's grab some paint right on it. I'm going to use a little brown sienna here and just going to pull away as we do with our toothbrush, but this will give us some texture into an area very quickly. Now we're putting this texture into water so it's going to spread. It's going to start to paint all by itself into a unique little pattern just because we have water down first and then you can move that toothbrush around and see what appears there. And so it has some texture and detail showing up immediately. There's a uh, very well-known national artist named John Solomon and John will use texture throughout his paintings and he does a lot of urban landscapes and detailed paintings and he'll put a lot of texture into them. He uses all kinds of tools for that. This is one of them. But this method will let you, oh, you can paint rocks in this manner. You can do all kinds of different surfaces with it. You can also blank out areas where you want to pick things up. And your paper towel can be a very good tool for saying, okay, there's an interesting texture shape to it. There's some things appearing right here that are kind of fun and you never know what's going to show up. But what if we want to put some other paint down in there and what if we'd like to pick some up? Well, you can use your paper towel and just twist it and end up with a little point on it. You can literally go in and take away some paint while it's wet and you can move that paint right off. And so you can have some other detail shapes start to show up within your painting. So you can start to put paint down, you can take it back off again and simple little tools to do that are right there in your hand with paper towels. You can also do it with the brush, but sometimes the paper towel will be more effective. It's actually going to pull more pigment off of those surfaces faster. As soon as it dries, it, this won't work. So it's something you have to really get right on it right off the bat. As soon as you see something you want to start to add an accent to, you can. Another tool here is a scrubbing brush. And Scrubbers are, are fun little brushes. They're usually, well, either a straight or an angled head. This has an angled head on it. And they are built for one thing and one tool, and that's to go in and literally scrub paint away in watercolor. No other type of paint will, will do this, but you can literally cut and scrape away paint with one of these tools. And a scrubber brush, these are very inexpensive and they're widely available, but they are just little angled headed uh, nylon bristles and you use them just to go in and pull some paint off. But all you have to do is use some water on it and go in and scrub, scrub, scrub away. And that lifting process is what we're aiming for here. And that works really well to make that happen. In addition, the uh, other thing we use a lot is a palette knife. Palette knives are, are a great tool to, to work with because they, they add a whole different look to our, our watercolor surface. The simple way to just try them out and see what you think. I often, they come in plastic and they come in metal. This is a, this is a metal one. Uh, you can use plastic ones as well, although I like the metal because it gives us more of a, a feel to them and they, they certainly hold up longer but they also get more control out of them. There are more things you can do with a metal one than you can with a plastic one. But, let's just put some water down in this little chunk down here and let's play around with that palette knife and see what shows up. I'm going to put some cobalt blue down in this corner and what we want to do is to simply play around with that knife a bit and see what we can come up with. 
Now you can apply paint directly with the palette knife, just as you would in an oil painting or an acrylic painting, just by using the knife as a tool to put paint down, and you can use it like a pen. It says picking up a little bit of water here, which is why it's spreading. But that you can use with any color, and you can literally draw with it, and you can make all kinds of kind of fun shapes with it. This happens to be a tree branch I'm playing around with over here. But that's all palette knife work. Now you can use the end of it, or you can use the flat portion of the blade, or you can scrape with it and make different types of shapes and colors come out in different patterns. It also tends to break up as you use it. Now down here in the cobalt blue area, this paint is not dry yet. This is my finger going in here to finger paint with it. You can do that. But also with a palette knife, you can go in and you can start to scrape that paint away. You can do it with the edge of the knife, or you can do it with just the point and tip. But you can be very precise with the use of the palette knife in terms of putting different shapes in. You can add color and design to your pieces just by switching out and putting different little strokes into it. What I will often do with this, though, is to start working on doing a little bush or tree over in the corner. You can use the edge of the knife to cut into the surface of the paint, and it will give you some very interesting effects just to try out that palette knife as a, as a drawing and cutting tool. What you'll do is go right through the sizing that's on the paper and it will, the paint will literally drop down into where you're chopping away and removing that sizing from the top of the, of the paper. And as a result of that, if you come back with a brush and go over where you've just been painting with, or using your palette knife, and then you can blot gently on top of that, you're going to see that those lines that you put in will remain. So you can get some very interesting effects with, you know, blotting and moving paint, adding more color, take it on, take it off, bounce it around, but it ends up with some very strong abstract designs will appear right in front of you on those areas where you're using the palette knife as, as part of your, your toolkit. The uh, best part of the knife, though, is when we're using it as a pen, because you can restate different areas in there as well. So palette knife is something to get used to using. They uh, have lots of different oh, angles and things you can get. And as a result, when you're getting away from using a brush all the time, you'll end up with some things that appear in front of you that you never thought were going to be possible, and you certainly can't replicate them with a the, with the brush, but you can incorporate both brush strokes and palette knife to end up with some very unique and unusual shapes every single time. And that's part of the beauty of watercolor is you can use some different tools and make that happen. The one other tool that we often forget about is to use a brush. But instead of the tip, we'll use the back of the brush. And we can come in with that. And you once again can use that as a pen or pencil and you can make lots of interesting tree shapes with it, change colors, obviously. But you can make all kinds of fun shapes just using the back of a brush, and it works every time. So that you, all you do is just dip it in, use it like you would a quill pen, and just draw with it. But as a result, you end up with these very dramatic, fun shapes of just using the, the back of, the, of, a, of a brush. But those are a fun way to get unique shapes going as well. Palette knife, back of the brush, palette knife again, textured with a toothbrush, all kinds of tools for different effects. People use sponges and spattering tools, all kinds of different things with it as well. There are oh, well, lots and lots of other methods in addition to what we're doing today. But these will certainly get you started. And you know, any old toothbrush will do. Once you kind of wear them out, don't use them again in your mouth, but you can certainly use them for painting, and they're fun to, fun to use. So give it a try. Have some fun with it. It's all experimental. We never know what's going to show up, but it's fun every time. Thanks for checking in. See you soon.